Hi, this is Sahana. Today we are going to discuss the role of appsetix.json file in ASP.NET Core applications. In our last session, we have discussed program.cs file. If you want to check that video, you can visit ASP.NET Core playlist. Today we are going to discuss one more important file that is appsetix.json file. This is our ASP.NET Core MEC application. At the bottom, you can see appsetix.json file. I will open this file. See, here is our appsetix.json file. This is not CS file. This is JSON file. First of all, what is appsetix.json file? It is an application configuration file. And we can set different configurations as key value pairs. Very important thing to know here is, this is one of the places where we can provide configuration information. This is not the only place where we set configuration information. There are various configuration sources available in ASP.NET Core application. I'm referring to this MSDN document. There are different configuration providers available for ASP.NET Core applications. And appsettings.json file is one such configuration file. Now we know that this is a configuration file, but why do we need configuration files? If you look at this app settings.json file, we have specified certain application related settings like here logging is the key and this is a value. We have set certain values related to logging. And if you look at this thing here, here connection strings is the key. And here we have specified the database where this application is pointing to. If I have to answer why do we need configuration files, with these files, we can easily organize, manage, and customize settings that are specific to an application. Most commonly, we store connection string, then any logging settings. If you are configuring email for your application, then we set email related settings here. Then if you are referring to any external API, then you can store API keys here. A few examples in real time application, it depends upon the requirement of your application. Now we know what this file is all about and what goes here. Next question is how to access the values that are stored in this file. For demonstration purpose, I will define my own key value pairs here. Remember, this is a JSON file. I'll write comma, then I will write my key. Test key will be my key. Then I have to separate the value by colon. Then again, I'll define a string value that is test value. I'll save this file. Next thing is to access this value from different places of my application. If you look at this program.cs file, we are accessing connection string here. We are making use of this builder instance, which is the instance of web application builder. And this configuration represents configuration manager. To access configuration values, we can make use of this configuration manager. We are taking help of this get connection string method and we are passing the key here. Tutorial DB connection is the key. Here, if you notice, get connection string is a shorthand for get section. Then we are passing section name. Then we are accessing that value. This is one such way. I'll show you different ways to access values from this. Say I want to access test value. I'll declare a variable. I'll say test value then i'll make use of builder configuration manager if you want to access by using get section you can write get section then pass key in our case key is test key you have to say value breakpoint here let's run and see see we have accessed test value one more approach is instead of get section method, we can use get value method. This is another way. We can make use of configuration manager and you can and you can use this get value method. And this is a generic method. You are passing type here. Next, you are passing key. With both the approaches, we get the same result. We know how to access configuration values from program.cs file. If you want to access configuration values from controller, then how to do that? I will open home controller. Here we have index action method Here we have constructor. And if you notice, we are injecting logging service here. Same way, we can make use of dependency injection and we can inject configuration manager. Here we have constructor. I will inject I configuration manager. And I will write configuration. The same way, I will declare private variable. 
it is going to be read only and it is of the type i configuration now here i'm assigning this configuration to this private field now we can access configuration values using this field let's see how to do that if i want to access this key value then simply i'll declare variable i'll say test key this time we can access this private field i'll say configuration i'll show you how to access using get value method i will say get value get value is a generic method we have to pass type and we want to access string next we can pass key try test key done i'll put breakpoint here let's see whether it is working or not i'll run the application see even from controller we are able to access configuration values see we are able to access test value this is how we can define and access values from app settings.json file uh, one more important thing is you can have different files for different environments see if you expand app settings.json here you can find one more file app settings.development.json here we have only few information the same way you can maintain separate files for staging as well as production in short this is very helpful and very important file in asp.net core applications if you have subscribed to my channel thank you very much if you are not and if you find this content useful then do consider subscribing to my channel see you soon in the next video thank you